Hello everyone. This week's first chapter of Friday is Any Whatever by Lois Ruby. The description. With his bar mitzvah on the horizon, 13-year-old Eddie needs to do a community service project, and he needs to start yesterday. Against his better judgment, he ends up with a volunteering gig at Silverbrook Pavilion Retirement Home, where the elderly residents call him Eddie Whatever, so they won't have to remember his last name. Eddie expects his time at Silverbrook to drag, but at least his friend Tessa will be there to keep him company, if he can manage to avoid embarrassing himself in front of her. Soon though, the seniors upend all Eddie's assumptions. Their lives are full of excitement, with a dramatic courtship unfolding, long hidden secrets emerging, rumors of a vengeful ghost running rampant, and a thief on the loose. When suspicion for the thefts falls on Eddie, he has to team up with the seniors and Tessa to clear his name and solve the mysteries of Silverbrook. Chapter 1 How does mom find it crumpled in the bottom of my backpack where it's been sitting for the past three weeks? She pulls the letter out and irons it with her palms. Did you read this, Eddie? It says all the bar and bat mitzvah press students have to choose a mitzvah project. What a terrific idea! I grab my baseball pants out of the dryer and shake out the wrinkles. You can hardly see the grass stains, though the hole in the seat could be humiliating after another couple of slides and a second. The jersey thuds to my knees. Number five, Hank Greenberg's number. Because back in his day, the 30s and 40s, my hero was called the Hebrew Hammer. Ugh, do I have to? Can't you just call Rabbi Kaffler and tell him that I'm Edward Benjamin Lewin? trouble when she calls me by my full name. You'd better get on board with this quickly because you need to put in a minimum of 25 hours over the next three months. 25 hours? When? I have regular school and Hebrew school, B'nai Mitzvah classes on Tuesday, baseball on Thursdays, robotics club Wednesday mornings, and synagogue Saturday mornings. Tell me, when can I fit in a mitzvah project? Monday and Wednesday afternoons, and I've got just the place. I saw in the paper the other day that Silverbrook Pavilion welcomes volunteers. I've heard of it. Tessa Schwartz, in my B'nai Mitzvah class, decided to volunteer there but quit practically immediately. What a recommendation. Mom's already grabbed her tablet and pulled up the website for the retirement home. Silverbrook is a continuum of care facility for senior citizens. Lovable old folks who are thrilled to have young people around. See? She shows me the homepage on the tablet screen. Silverbrook Pavilion, where old is the new young. Are they kidding? I picture shrunken crones licking lollipops or blowing pinwheels. Baldies playing hit and catch with a nerf gun and bat. Rock, paper, scissors to decide who bats first. And you can walk there. Perfect. You can start next Monday. We'll call the administrator to set it up. Oh, mom, give me a break. Instead, she gives me her famous evil eye while looking up the number. My mom, when she decides something, an army of fire ants under her bare feet won't change her mind. So after school on Monday, mom marches me to the old folks place and deserts me at the main entrance. I think about making one last bid for freedom, but she's got that look on her face, so I whoosh in my breath and blow out a gust of hot air as I tromp up the wheelchair ramp to my doom. Despite Silverbrook's slogan, there's nothing young about the wrinkly people lining the building's front porch. They make grandma and grandpa in Cincinnati look like high schoolers. Some lean their chins on canes. Others look stuck in wheelchairs or rocking chairs, or they're backed onto their walker seats. All of them look like they're watching a silent movie playing in midair, at least until every pair of eyes rotates towards me. One woman points at me with a skinny, unlit cigar stuck in a plastic holder. Who's this? She croaks. I mean, she doesn't croak, as in die on the spot, but she sounds like a bullfrog and her brown face is as worn and cracked as dad's briefcase. The fancy gold watch that slid down from her wrist to her elbow catches a glint of sunlight that almost blinds me. The lady next to her pulls thick glasses down from her halo of cloud white hair and googly eyes me. 
Could be Mrs. Goldfarb's youngest great-grandson. See the way his hair hangs in his eyes? I swipe my hand across my forehead, but my squirrel-colored hair just flops right back. Two guys who've been smoking cigars, blowing fruity puffs into each other's faces, turn to stare. One of them hooks his cane around my arm and reels me in. Afternoon, Sonny. What you up to? Leave him alone, Herman, the other cigar man barks. Mind your own P's and Q's, Maury. Cigar smoke blasts out of Herman. I'm Eddie Lewin, I say, the new volunteer. Herman Stark, says the cigar man who lassoed me with his cane, and this nudnik here is Maury Glosser. I'm capable of introducing myself, you old fleabag. Some of us still have our memories intact, you know. Don't mind them, says the cigar lady with the elegant watch. I'm Ethelene Callahan, and this is Rosa Doran. Nice to meet you all. When I take a step back to extricate my arm from the crook of Mr. Stark's cane, the automatic door swooshes open. Inside, two women in wheelchairs guard the lobby like fierce stone lions that I saw last summer at the New York Public Library. One lady has red knee socks pulled up on her skinny legs. No old lady shoes. Her straight straw-like hair hangs to her shoulders the color of a bruised lemon. The other lady, who's shrunk down to the size of a fifth grader, is covered in purple, head to toe, including purple blotches on her hands. Her smile flashes on and off, reminding me of a changing stoplight. With a face twisted into a frown, the lady with the red socks leans towards me. Welcome to Silverbook. Welcome. Her accent's barely noticeable, but it's there. Call me Lena. Everyone calls me that except her. I'm a twin, you know. How would I know? And who is her? My name's Eddie L whatever. Look, I'll forget it in two minutes. How long's your sentence with us? Great start. Mom promised Silverbrook an hour every Monday and Wednesday. In an hour, you can play four innings or three video games. But here, only 55 minutes to go. I'm here till June. Lena says, you must be one of the mitzvah project kids. Yeah. I say with a sigh. My bar mitzvah is barely three months off. The whole family's flying into Oklahoma City for it, but I'll be a no-show unless I do my 25 hours of community service. Believe me, I'd rather be messing around with the robot that my squad's building at school or hitting baseballs out of the park. Like that ever happens. Lena leans forward again, stretching a long neck and drilling her milky blue eyes into mine. Baseball, huh? Yep. Proud to play for the Oak Ridge Oilers, which is famous statewide for being second from the bottom of all the Oklahoma middle schools. But at least we aren't the bottom feeders. Hmm, you might be an improvement over the usual boring kids we get here. In her next breath, she ruins the whole thing. You're short for 13, tuck in your shirt, kid. I jam my knee-length Oilers jersey into my jeans so it looks like a blown out rubber tire around my middle. Don't mind me, she adds. I'm a cranky old witch. Aw, uh, I bet you're not as cranky as you think. Said it to be polite, but I believe her. Oh, says the little purple lady. She's as bitter as beet horseradish. And it's best not to cross me. Lena puts up her gnarled dukes and starts punching the air. No one would believe that I am air sparring with an old lady in a wheelchair. Thankfully, she lowers her fist before I accidentally sock her in the jaw. I should warn you, Eddie, whatever. The other lady makes a face. Before I can ask, warn me about what? Lena says, this place is haunted. And that is the first chapter of Eddie Whatever. This was actually shortlisted to be a nominee for next year's statewide reading challenge. It did not make the final cut, but it is still a really good read. So part mystery, lots of comedy, uh, and I think you will really enjoy this. So run by the library and check it out.